Hi all, it's Rio Cloud Sync. In today's session, we'll be accessing Microsoft Enter ID, the Identity and Access Management Service, and looking at conditional access in conjunction with terms of use. First things first, you as a global administrator or conditional access administrator are required to access the Microsoft Enter Admin Center. We can access the dashboard by navigating to entra.microsoft.com and it will present a high level dashboard. With that on the left hand side, if we want to hover to the service pane named protection and scroll down to conditional access. Upon, upon given the correct roles, you do require the correct licensing. So you will require a premium tier of a license, i.e. a Microsoft Entra ID P1 or Microsoft Entra ID P2. On the left hand side under manage, if we select terms of use, this will present us options to be able to create new terms of use, edit terms of use and report in terms of use. So let's first understand what are terms of use within a deployment of conditional access. Well, terms of use provides a simple method for your organization to display information to your end users. It also ensures users accept relevant disclaimers based on legal and compliance regulations. However, it always begs the question, why would you use it within your organization? Well, for general terms for your users, define specific terms and use based on user types and application sensitivity, as well as assist in meeting GDPR regulations, and maybe just general all up compliance and audit. Maybe you're trying to achieve the likes of cyber essentials, for example. When we look at deployment, we can select new terms and it'll present us a list of properties or options to be able to configure the terms of use within a conditional access policy. From a high level perspective, we look at creating the terms of use, enforcement at signing, user consent, and view and audit. First things first, we need to select a name. This name is for you as an administrator. The end user would not see this name. So maybe we just put organizations, T's and C's. Okay, I'm gonna to switch to a new tab. I'm going to type in organizations, T's and C's. The reason I've switched to a new tab is I've just uploaded a PDF. You can see here I've uploaded a PDF. Just represent this as your, your T's and C's per se. We then want to select a default language. In this, I'm going to select English United Kingdom. Obviously, preference is based upon location and wherever you are. This will override any default language set on the PC itself. And display name this will be presented to the end user. So once again, I may just put organizations, T's and C's. That can marry up with the name uh, for you as administrator. It may simplify things as well. We can add additional T's and C's upon sign up by just pre pressing select add language. However, we're just going to remove this for the time being. We only want the one. Require users to expand terms of use. Yes. Do you want them to read the terms of use rather than just agreeing to the terms of use? We can select on or we can select off. Simplicity, I'm just going to leave the configuration as off for the time being. Require users to consent on every device. Maybe they can consent on one device and that carries over to all the devices um, which are corporately managed. Up to you and expire consent, uh, consents. Maybe we set this to on, and maybe we want the, the consent to expire on an annual basis, biannual, quarterly, monthly. You can set the starting date as well as the end date. If we select off, we could just select the duration before reacceptance is required. Um, generally speaking, it's usually 90 days, and we select 90 days. In terms of limitations, while I'm, while I'm looking at the configuration, um, you can't deploy terms of use to service accounts. And also there's a limit of 40 terms per tenancy. So in terms of configuration, that's it for terms of use. The next step is to create the conditional access policy and include the terms of use within the conditional access policy through the grant control method. And with that, deploy that to Z users. So once again, under conditional access, we look at enforced conditional access policy templates. There'll be two options, one for custom policy and one for create conditional access policy later. Well, if we're going to deploy it, we might as well deploy it now. So we select custom policy and we select create. That will take us to conditional access pane. If you select it later, you would have to access conditional access later on. 
Once again, we just want to type in organization T's and C's. That's all we're deploying, uh, deploying in this uh, instance. We want to select users. We can scope this out to a spe specific set of users through Microsoft 365 security groups, or maybe just individual users, and we set all users. We may want to exclude the likes of um, service accounts, for example, directory roles, guests. There may be a separate T's and C's for guests or B2B users. In this instance, simplicity, we'll select all users. Target resources, we want to select all cloud apps. Maybe you are using authentication context labels, okay? And a Z set of actions, you may want someone to agree to terms of use. We want to select conditions. We'll leave this all, all um, default or templated per se. And we'll just go to the grant access controls. And we can select our organizations, T's and C's. Maybe we want to require one or, or more of the selected controls or require all the selected controls. We'll keep it require all selected controls and we'll require multi-factor authentication as well as the organization's T's and C's. And we'll select select. There may be an instance uh, you may want to enforce this policy and report only for monitoring purposes. However, that's up to you. Um, in this case, we could just select on and hit create. So as and when a user does sign in, this is what it will look like. Um, that they'll be prompted to um, agree to the terms of use you've, you've uploaded. Um, and with that, they'll be able to authenticate to the console itself. Okay, once you've deployed that to, to the Z users. If we go back one, I'm not gonna save this, it's a sandbox. We can see the organization's T's and C's from a terms of use perspective, okay? We can click the organization's T's and C's and see the, the current config. And with that, we do have an option to break this down and hit edit terms, of which we could change the name or we can require users to expand the terms of use. And we can add additional languages if required. If we go back, we can see current accepted as well and current declined. If you do click the, the hyperlink here, it's not very obvious, but if you do select the number here, you can see the amount of users who either accepted or declined the terms of use from that perspective. And you can filter accordingly. Like I said, if you do have that, if you do have several terms of use or you've reached a limit of 40 terms of uses, you'll be able to filter down of which terms of use you're looking at to report on. And you can uh, define by uh, version versioning as well. Any other questions, please do let me know. Once again, this is just a quick overview on terms of use. Thank you very much.